I have come to a little uh, walkabout. Well, not the walkabout walkabout, but just plain walkabout and hoping to check out some more raspberries. And while I'm at it, I figured I could try to capture some of our uh, late summer sounds and colours. For example, if you compare with the early spring videos where everything is like blindingly green, there's still plenty of green around, but you also see all sorts of yellows and whites and whatnot uh, of all the stuff that's flowering. And the strawberries, some of their leaves are starting to um, brown their course or something. So the red of the strawberries is no longer the berries but the leaves. Some other leaves are also turning uh, brown and yellow in places. Uh, mostly due to dry weather, but some just uh, just due to aging and whatnot. And uh, where in spring you had uh, the uh, new green bursting through the existing brown, then now it's a little bit uh, the opposite. You have the green background with the first uh, splashes of brown starting to appear here and there. There there are lots of things still blossoming and some starting to blossom but there are also plenty of uh, stuff that has already well bloomed its blooming season. And speaking of sounds, there's this almost constant uh, grasshopper um buzzing now like that's one of the uh, one of the telltale late summer things they start about late June I mean late July and at this point they're, they're everywhere and every time and the most symptomatic late summer sound is the um, late night uh, late night cross of the choir when it's already dark outside, but still warm, and they just keep them going. Also, all those little cute leafy plants have now grown tall. Ah, this is my turn. Whoop, I'm taking a little blueberry break here. occurs to me that it hasn't rained for days. In fact, I think the uh, last bigger rain was in July, or maybe maybe a week ago or so. And uh, the blueberries are also kind of not not as plump as they were uh, during the last picking. Like you can tell by the berries that uh, that the forest is very dry right now. Also, the air is kind of heavy and sort of like building up some thunder although it might just sort of drift away like yesterday well 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 if somebody has been picking here they certainly have missed this spot I have just improved my life quality and prolonged my stay in the woods uh, by peeing behind a bush. Of course I washed my hands afterwards so I can go on picking my berries. Hmm, not bad. Speaking of late summer colours again, more and more uh, yellow is popping up. Especially if it's a dry summer then, uh, then you will get yellow leaves quite early on. You have to show this. <laughs> These blueberries are positively humongous, especially compared with those uh, scrawny dry ones over there. Makes sense, these are growing more in shade. Speaking of uh, late summer again, a bunch of boxberries here, but looks like these could still use some growing time. Like this kind 
is ripe but where is she even a hint of green those aren't ready yet hmm, hello I don't remember passing this uh, swampy patch uh, the other day so it appears that I I have usually taken the other uh, other fork uh, fork on the road although that clearing ahead is definitely the one with the raspberries but yeah I think I I took a different turn than usually this is so cool again I'm not going to step in there too much because I don't want to damage the uh, mossy parts. Also, I don't know what's underneath. So yeah, it looks like I would have to wade through uh, this terrain to get to my usual spot. So I think I'm gonna leave the raspers alone for today and instead start making my way home right after I have checked out this epic stump. Wow. Yeah, I think that's quite enough berries for today. I mean, I didn't plan on foraging anyway. Surprise, surprise. I just wanted to move a little bit. So, I'm gonna turn back now and make my way home. Onward. All these grasshoppers, man. I haven't been able to capture any in my uh, viewfinder today. But I did get some footage of another one some days ago, so I'm going to splice it in here. So these sorts of uh, lazy-ish strolls through the afternoon haze, especially when it's very warm, always seem to trigger all sorts of uh, world building questions. Here's one for you. So let's say you're gonna terraform and colonize a bunch of exoplanets. And more so uh, because of practical reasons, uh, size, what have you, uh, many of those colonized worlds will, would be um, let's say moons around gas giants and what have you. Now the thing is, I, I recently learned that uh, all bigger moons, that these moons that are big enough to be round and have a stable orbit, are tidally locked to their planet. As in, like, like our moon, they are facing uh, the same way uh, in relation to their planet and uh, their rotation is rather uh, rather slow, or their rotation is uh, is the same as their uh, revolution, meaning the uh, day-night cycles would be rather long. So this sort of question to think through here that I'm trying to settle in my mind is how these sorts of rhythms would uh, influence the people who live there. Like, let's say you have set up a colony, you have perhaps figured out some of the agricultural stuff, like maybe some sort of uh, light reflecting, uh, illuminated uh, greenhouses, what have you. But at the same time, if you have even a few generations living in those conditions, uh, that, that would have an impact on their culture, how they perceive um, you know, the daily routines, how they, how they even set up their uh, well, human-sized cycles in the backdrop of the moon-sized cycles and all that. So yeah, <laughs> that's what I keep thinking about when I go to woods. Oh. And the related question that I have been pondering about in relation to these uh, uh, terraform moons is that um, 
assuming that uh, they have or you have uh, provided them built up an atmosphere uh, like how would this uh, how would the, the sort of moon length uh, day night cycle uh, set up uh, the local climate like I don't know if uh, if if these uh, um, moon moons uh, if they would have uh, an axis tilt comparable to Earth, for example, or or if they would be quite straight up. So, like, on one hand, uh, my mind keeps returning to these questions. On the other hand, I don't ha have enough background knowledge to uh, to sort them out uh, in a meaningful way. So I just kind of keep pondering and poking. Home sweet home, I believe it is time to take another dip in the river.